This tutorial will show you how to create an ambient occlusion gradient post-process effect using my Blend Modes pack, now available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. If you wish to purchase the Blend Modes pack or any of my other products, you can find a link to them in the description of this video or on my website elias-wick.com. Your ambient occlusion gradient post-process effect will look something like this after you've followed all of the steps in this tutorial. Once you've installed the Blend Modes pack and opened your project, go into your content browser and create a new material. You can name this material to whatever you want. I'm going to name the material M underscore ambient occlusion gradient. Before we create the actual effect using the Blend Modes pack, we want to create a post-process volume. This is required in order for the effect to be shown in the viewport. To do this, you want to go into the Place Actors panel, select the Volumes tab, and scroll down until you find the post-process volume. If you can't find your Place Actors panel, you can enable it under Window and Place Actors. Once you have located the post-process volume, drag it into your level. Select the volume and scroll down until you find the Rendering Features group. In this group you can find the post-process materials. Expand the section and add an array element using the plus icon. Click the Choose drop-down menu and select Asset Reference. You can now press the Non drop-down menu and select your newly created material. You need to be within the bounds of your post-process volume in order for the post-process material to be shown. If you wish to have the post-process material extend throughout the entire level, you can scroll down until you find the post-process volume settings group and enable the infinite extent. You can now open your newly created material so that we can create the ambient occlusion gradient effect. Since we've already bound the material to the post-process volume, the effect should be visible in the viewport as soon as we apply our changes to the material. Creating the ambient occlusion gradient post-process material is super simple thanks to the Blend Modes pack. In the material editor, we need to go ahead and change the material domain from surface to post-process. This is required for the material to be able to be viewed within the post-process volume. We also want to scroll down until we find the post-process material group and then we want to go ahead and change the blendable location to be before tone mapping. We can now find our blend modes by right clicking inside of the grid and then typing in Elias Wick dash blend modes. In our case, we want to go ahead and select color. By itself, this blend mode is not going to do anything on its own, so if we plug in the result to the emissive color, nothing is going to happen. What we now want to do is to create a texture sample node. This can be done easily by holding down the T key on the keyboard and then left clicking somewhere in the view. We then want to hook up the R, G and B output from the texture sample into our color blend mode blend input. You then want to go ahead and select the texture sample and in the details panel, you want to add a texture to it. In my case, I'm going to be adding a gradient texture because I think it looks the best. After we've added the texture sample, we want to right click and add a scene texture. In the details panel, you can find the scene texture ID. Here we want to set it to be ambient occlusion. You can then plug the color output from the scene texture into the color blend mode base input. If I now go ahead and press apply and save in the top left corner and minimize the view, we can actually go ahead and see how the result looks in the viewport of the game. Now this on its own looks like a really cool post-process effect but it's not really what I showed you in the beginning. So if we now go ahead and maximize the material editor once again, we want to add one more node in order for us to be able to achieve the effect I showed you in the beginning of this video. We're going to add this final node the same way we added the texture sample, but instead of holding down the T key on the keyboard, we want to hold down the O key and then left click somewhere in the view. This will add the invert node. 
As our final step, we want to hook up the scene texture output color into the input of the invert node and the output from the invert node into our color blend mode base input. We can then go ahead and apply the changes, save it, and then close down the material editor. The final effect looks really cool, but we can't really see that in this sort of scene. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another scene to show you a bit of how it could look. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to know how to create a dirty screen post-process effect like this one, make sure to watch the dirty screen post-process video tutorial where I use the blend modes pack to create the effect. For more information about my blend modes pack, make sure to check the Unreal Engine Marketplace link in the video description or on my website elias-wick.com.